Good afternoon, Manufacturing All-Stars, and welcome to this episode of Manufacturing Happy Hour, live from Marina Del Rey down in Los Angeles, California. Today, you are going to learn why manufacturing is sexy. And there is no better person to have on this show to fill us in on that than Christina Z. Holly. Z, Cheers. welcome to the show. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> good, to, good to be here, and welcome to L.A. Happy to have you on, and, and to give you a proper introduction to our audience, uh, Z has been responsible for a number of innovative things throughout tech and manufacturing. She's an MIT-trained engineer, started her career with multiple successful tech startups, and has since gone on to create the first TEDx, as well as what she's focused on now, doing the Art of Manufacturing podcast in addition to a nonprofit focused on manufacturing in the Los Angeles area. But Z, that's just my intro. Can you fill our audience in on maybe a couple of the gaps that I might have missed? Yeah, I think if I were to think about you know, looking back my career so far, what I've been focusing on, what my passion is, what I'm good at, has been really uh, finding undiscovered talent and ideas and helping them make an impact, hel helping them tell a story. So whether it was you know, creating the first TEDx and helping uh, academics and others to tell their story, starting the innovation centers at MIT and USC, helping dozens of faculty start um, venture-backed businesses. Mm -hmm. Now really focus, it's really about creating something larger than ourselves, right? Yeah. So with manufacturing, it's about starting with an idea, with an invention, with a design, uh, and then say, okay, well, it's enough to, it's not enough to just have it for me. It's really about how do we create this for everybody and how do we mm -hmm. put it into production, mass produce it or produce it at much greater quantities. And that's what manufacturing is all about too. Well, well I love the way you describe it as make, you know, making something bigger than yourself because the, the, the way I described it at the start describing manufacturing as sexy might not be the word that most people typically associate with manufacturing right off the bat. So I've got a couple questions to dig into that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and first I'd like to start with, you know, maybe what are some things that manufacturing in the industry can learn from other industries? Because I think there are other industries out there that might appear more attractive just at a first glance. But what do you think manufacturers can learn from those other industries? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, one of the most important things that I found, uh, you know, especially creating like a tech ecosystem around MIT or at USC, it, it's all about the community. It's about the ecosystem. It's mm -hmm. not just about um, it's not just about capital, or it's not just about you know the the any one particular thing. It's about creating connectivity, and it's also about um, creating the culture that values that you know, creating that something bigger. And so that's one of the things that we did at MIT, for example, is kind of revolutionary where we thought, okay, how do we help, how do we bring, make it acceptable and encourage that faculty would actually start a company and help them along in that process. So we had this grant program where we'd bring in, we called them catalysts, and I'm doing okay. the same thing here with Make It in LA. We're going to have yeah. catalysts, right? I think mentor, the word mentor is overused. Mm -hmm. But um, where you attract these great ideas, you attract these great faculty and graduate students, you attract people from the business community to this place where they can, they can mix and mingle. And the key is you don't want to be that it's not a hub and spoke model. It's about mm -hmm. creating the network so that individuals can actually know where to go. So in Hollywood, if you want to create a film or you want to create a TV show, you basically know who to call and you're like, I'm going to put together this team right now. We're going to mm -hmm. shoot it right now. And tech is like that too, especially depending yeah. on the depending on the city, right? Not all cities are quite there, but manufacturing is not like that yet. And so that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to create that web so that people know how to get stuff done. Sure. And and I've kind of seen the same thing because you're down here in Los Angeles. I'm up in San Francisco. And, and to be honest, one of the reasons that we started this video series was because the community wasn't exactly there yet. Yeah. And we look at it as, you know, while I do these manufacturing happy hour videos, we also <laughs> do actual happy hours, bringing events, bringing other what I'd call thought leaders, people that are progressive in the manufacturing yeah. space together, which I know some of you watching this have been to, so thank you to those that, uh, <laughs> that have attended. And for those that you have not, highly encourage you to do so because as he's mentioning, you know, that's, that's one thing that's lacking that we've seen other industries doing differently in the past. Mm -hmm. um, you know, speaking of which, are there other, I guess, any other things you think that manufacturers can do differently aside from building that community or any other things that stick out that maybe through your experience you've seen 
starting to to come up that manufacturers are doing more of or could start doing more of? Yeah, I mean, I think part of it could be about um, taking a little bit more of a an entrepreneurial mindset. And mm-hmm. I, I, I say that with caution, though. So I think that um, there's a there's a difference between startups and yeah. corporate corporations and their startups are not just small co- corporations. Right. Mm-hmm. But I think that there's certain mindset of the risk taking the mm-hmm. um, kind of iteration, but it's harder when you're, I mean, that's, that's one of the differences, right? It's harder to iterate when you're actually creating physical product. Yep. Right. Um, so I think that that, that kind of a, um, that kind of a mindset and the more of the kind of, um, imagination rather than just trying to create just to be creative it's like imagining a bigger future a different future and not getting stuck in your um the the current state of affairs your whole like oh how do i solve a problem it's not about solving problems it's about Mm -hmm. imagining a different future so a good example is that my one of the recent episodes of the art of manufacturing we had uh kevin zinger who's the ceo of divergent 3d it's an automotive company here in la okay and yeah, so he so he's had this really crazy, you know, very very um, deep experience as a tech entrepreneur, and he looked at the future of of transportation automa- uh, automotive and said, okay, what is that going to look like? It's actually going to be about, aut- um, it's about auto. Sorry, <laughs> can we start over? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> oh, you don't have to it's- cut this. I'm just going to say. <laughs> I'm getting confused. <laughs> Automotive and autonomous vehicles. Thank you. Yes, so, <laughs> two different things. So he's looking at a future of autonomous autonomous vehicles. And what does that mean? That means that it's a it's the early stages. It's, it's very entrepreneurial. It's, it's a, the early stages of innovation. So what you have to do is you have to create a, a, a platform where you can create uh, and iterate, let's say 10,000 vehicles and, mm-hmm. and be profitable. That's never been heard of before. An automotive company that can actually in two years, create a new car design yeah. and be profitable. Is, is this the company that's 3D printing yes. the cars? Okay, that's because I, I, was, I wasn't sure if you said that at the start, but yes, I have heard of these, yeah. these individuals before. Well, and the thing is a lot of people say, oh, okay, well, the important thing is that it's 3D printing cars. Well, that's the way he does it, right? So a lot yeah. of people start with the premise of, oh, well, it's so much cooler to 3D print cars. Well, no, that's just, it's it, two things. One is that he... He's created this incredibly innovative platform where he can partner with other manufacturers, um, car manufacturers, but he's also looking at it from the sustainability perspective. Mm-hmm. So it's most people think the best thing they can do with their car, you know, to try to be more environmentally friendly is to um, use an electric vehicle. When in mm-hmm. fact, the biggest impact to the environment is the manufacturing of mm-hmm. the car, not the driving, not the drivetrain, not the fuel that you're using. It's actually the manufacturing. So that's what he's. Um, so that's what he's looking at is mm-hmm. by doing this, you're creating a much lighter weight vehicle because you're custom designing the the parts exactly to be as efficient as possible. And these are res- part. Most of these products or these components are recy- uh, recyclable. So he's looking at kind of this uh, circular economy. Mm-hmm. So so anyway, the point being that. Who would have thought that you could be entrepreneurial until Tesla maybe, right? Like that's the first time yeah. that anyone's really thought about the fact that you could start from scratch and create an amazing well, car. And, and I still think as Tesla as kind of that first company that really combined, you know, Bay Area tech yeah. with old school Detroit manufacturing and yeah. brought it together under one roof. And, you know, if, if I heard you correctly listening through it, you know, when you describe, I guess back to the original question, how startup I'm not startups, how manufacturing companies can be more entrepreneurial. You're, ta- you're yeah. talking about being more iterative, taking risks, um, you know, having that bigger vision, whereas the story you just told was the bigger vision yeah. that um, the individual founding this car company had around sustainability yeah. with that industry. Is that a correct summary, yeah. would you say? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. And it's it's starting with the imagination to imagine a different future rather than iterative doesn't mean incremental, right? Mm-hmm. It's like you, you might have this grand vision, but then you then you have to iterate in order mm-hmm. to get to that grand vision. And you may end up in a totally different place and with a yeah. different, you know. But it's not about solving problems that you think are ahead of yourself. It's about first you envision that future and then you go, well, how am I going to actually capitalize on that future? 
Got it. And, and you know, to kind of to wrap things up with what you're seeing from your work with art of manufacturing right now, um, you know, what, what are some things that may have surprised you or maybe some other folks that are envisioning that bigger future that you've seen throughout doing this show? I think um, one of the biggest surprises is the challenge of, and maybe this is also, you know, apropos to the previous question as well, what we can learn from tech and the other industries mm -hmm. is... Uh, how hard it is to actually get stuff made um, yeah and so how to how hard it is to connect with resources I get requests all the time people saying well how do I get how do I get socks made locally and it's mm -hmm. like incredibly hard to find those resources um, it's easier to put it into a search engine and find something in China than it is to find here mm -hmm. and I think um, and, and I think the other surprise so the first reaction people have is well we just need to have our own Alibaba we call mm -hmm. it LA Baba, right? We <laughs> LA Baba. No, actually, <laughs> right, no, we're not. Uh, I think that that's a part of the equation, but there's, uh, um, I think one of the benefits to manufacturing locally is that relationship with, between people in the ecosystem. And so it's, it's about making it easier for you to connect and for every resource that you need to be one or two phone calls or emails away. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has to do with bringing people together, connecting people so they can share best practices. Um, so you know who, who are the real players in this industry and who mm -hmm. are the heroes. Um, if you were to ask like, uh, yeah, you, most people wouldn't know who, this, who, the, who the president of SpaceX is actually. Most people are like, oh, it's Elon Musk. Right. It's Most not. people would yeah. guess that. Yeah. It's Gwen Shotwell. Mm -hmm. So, but she, you know, so so we just don't really know who those players are. Um, mm -hmm. So, connecting that ecosystem is a really important part on a much more personal level. Got it. So, if I were to summarize, and I've, I've got one more question for you yeah. before we wrap up. But some of the things that I've heard today are it's about the community. It's about yeah. the ecosystem. It's also about having that bigger vision and also developing that entrepreneurial mentality and taking more of the right risks, would you say? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, that it's a little bit cliche to, to maybe uh, people would think, oh, it's about failure, taking risks, et cetera. I think mm -hmm. we have failure wrong. I think that failure is really less about, uh, like Elon Musk has said, I'd rather learn from success rather than failure. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the learning from that, from the missteps and um, picking yourself back up again and making sure that those missteps are small. Mm -hmm. It's harder in manufacturing. So I will totally acknowledge that. And mm -hmm. I think, but it's really inspiring to hear the stories from some of these entrepreneurs that I talk with. I mean, literally like Carl Kanai, he was the original creator. He's like the godfather of urban streetwear. He mm -hmm. almost lost the rights to his name mm -hmm. because of a bad business deal. Connie Huffa, she'd, she and her husband created pretty much developed the Nike Flyknit shoe and mm -hmm. because of a bad business deal they went bankrupt and they're starting over again or um, Greg Steltonpole who was the founder of Adwala he sold out to Coca-Cola for 600 million mm -hmm. and people think oh yay that was a great success yeah but as you learn in his story you realize that actually that was a deep for him a, a big failure because mm. it came from I wouldn't have guessed no yeah. but he sold out uh, and he okay. had to because because they had a product recall um, and it almost killed the company. And so now he has a second company, uh, okay. Califia Farms, and it's his second chance at Got starting it. over um, and really trying to impact the planet. And I'd say one more thing that's really surprising to me is the mm -hmm. increasing focus, this mission-driven aspect to a lot of what people, um, these manufacturers and these entrepreneurs are doing and this interest in sustainability. Mm -hmm. And there's a greater understanding that sustainability is not just about a brand identity or doing the right thing because it sounds like it's a great thing to do, but it's truly better for business. And it sounds mm -hmm. like a cliche, but I, it, there's a huge interest in sustainability. And that's pretty exciting to me. And, and you've given us a lot of great anecdotes today to really contextualize a lot of the things we talk about. Is there any like final words of wisdom you'd want to give to our audience before we wrap up the interview today? I don't know. I think, maybe, as I like to say, don't just make it, make it. <laughs> I like that. I dig that. Well, as, as a couple actions for the folks watching today, first thing I'd ask is let's keep this conversation going in the comments below on YouTube. When you see this, if you've got any of your own thoughts around sustainability, having that bigger vision, what your companies are doing, what you're individually doing for that, please mention that below. We'd love to engage in that conversation further. 
Also, we mentioned that Z has an excellent podcast called The Art of Manufacturing. I'm personally a fan. I would highly recommend subscribing to that on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts as well. And with that, Z, thank you so much for joining today. Thank you. Cheers. And for the rest of you out there, stay innovative, stay thirsty, and we will see you guys again next time. Cheers. See you later.